Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Jeff Alexander. I'm sorry, Mr. Jeff Chandler, in tonight's presentation of... Suspense. Tonight, with song and story, Autolite tells a classic tale of love and death. My true love's hair. Our star, Mr. Jeff Chandler. Well, Mr. McSorley, uh, doing a crossword puzzle? That I am, Harlow. Say, uh, what's perpetual motion? Why, that's the Autolite electrical system in your Autolite-equipped car. You need it every time you blow your horn, turn on your lights, radio, heater, and electrical windshield wipers. It goes to work the instant you press the starter and continues every second your engine runs. It's designed to give you the best performance money can buy. Mighty important, eh, Harlow? That's why it pays to treat your car's electrical system to a periodic checkup. See your dealer or your authorized Autolite service station before winter hits hard. You'll be the winner in smooth, economical performance and surer starts. To quickly locate your nearest authorized Autolite service station... Look in the classified section of the phone book under Automobile Electrical Service. Or call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents My True Love's Hair, starring Mr. Jeff Chandler, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Black was the color of my true love's hair. The lips were something wondrous fair. Something wondrous fair. The purest eyes and the day. The purest eyes. The daintiest hands. I loved the. I love the grass whereon she stands. What do you want here? Are you Mr. Genoit? I am. I am John Harvison of the ship Sumatra Bell. You are a sailor, and idleness has festered in you. Oh, you wandered to our island. You saw the girl outside my house. No, not for... I watched how you looked at her, looked at Rachel. It is not why I came to you, Mr. Genoit. Uh, then for what? Mr. Darren asked that when I was on Suva, I call upon you and Mrs. Genoit. Come in, then. Mrs. Genoit. Yes? What is it? Come in here, Mrs. Genoit. There is a man who has word of Mr. Darren in Philadelphia. This is John Harvison of the ship Sumatra Bell. Mrs. Genoit. And you have brought us word of Mr. Darren? Yes. Please sit down, Mr. Harvison. Thank you. Mr. Genoit? Yes? Call Rachel. Say to her to bring tea. Rachel! Rachel! And Mr. Darren is well, Mr. Harvison? Quite well. And his wife and child, too. He told me to tell you this. And to tell you he is troubled. Oh? He's not had word of you or Mr. Genoit in a year now. Not a letter, not a... Mr. Genoit's position on Suva. In the Office of Administration, it leaves him little time. But... Uh... It leaves him little time. And for me also. Little time to indulge the past and memories and lost friendships. On Suva, we live for the present, Mr. Harbison. The past flows away on our seas. We. How long will you be on Suva? Three days. We take cargo here and then... You were saying, Mr. Harbison? Three days. Then I will be gone. Do that, Mr. Harvison. For if you do not... What? What if I do not? You may serve the tea, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. What if I do not go from here, Mrs. Genoit? 
Your tone was strange, Mrs. Jenowit. What was... Come here, Rachel. Lean to me, Rachel. This is Rachel. This her hair. This her face. These her lips. This her throat. And you have looked on them. And they are of evil and of death. Mr. Harvison, your tea grows cold. She stood like a child. Rachel stood and let thin and pale fingers of Mrs. Jenowit trail across the pureness of her face. Let Mrs. Jenowit take the scarlet blossom from her hair and crush it against her mouth. And Rachel tasted of it and all the while looked at me and then left us. I love my love and well she knows I love the grass whereon she grows If she on earth no more I see My love I had of the tea, and there was little talk. I made farewell to Mr. and Mrs. Genovit. Back to the Sumatra Bell, then, to perform the duties of midshipman in officer's training for the merchant fleet. The paperwork that at the end of voyage would give me first mate's rating. And from the island, a soft wind laden with jasmine and wild palm. And on the seas of Fiji, it was night... Night that lay in hollows and great cups of coral reef and spilled now into the seas against the ship and against the island. And I must find her. I must go to her. Is she on earth no more I see? My love. Where was curve of wild palm against copper sky? Where was lagoon deep and stilled in crystal lava of volcano? He would come. I knew. In this place of the island was Rachel. Close. Bring thee close to me, John Harvison. So, close to me and sit with me. And watch thee how to set petals to sail upon the lagoon. See? Rachel. And watch thee the small flames of moon. How they kindle the still water. See? Yes. And on my hair. Black. The fingers of thee are gentle, John Harvison. Rachel. Yes? Were you always called so? Always, Rachel? No. Tell me your island name. I have forgotten. When I was a child, they took me to a school. There I lived. There I was called Rachel. And this manner of speech, you, you learned it at the school? I will speak to thee in what manner you wish. Thee would wish island words? Yes. And an island name for me? Yes, that none have called you, not at the school, not the Genoans, no one. That only thee will call me? That only the lips of thee? Yes. Come with me into the lagoon, and we will swim deep where the coral shell lies, and we will listen, and there will be a name for thee to call me. Yes. Come then. Yes. <laughs> Wait a... Who's there? <laughs> Gently, Mr. Harvison, or you'll set the birds to coy. You went and done it. What are you doing here? Now, Mr. Harvison, it's not aboard ship we are. Here I am more man than you. What are you doing here? <laughs> Tell him, girl. Tell the midshipman, Mr. Harvison, what Red does here. Tell him. 
After they left the Genoa, at the island store, he drank there. And he saw me. And... And what, Rachel? And I spoke to him of the lagoon and that I would come here. What? He spoke more softly then. And he said he wished to see things of the island. And I did not know what... You lie. So sweet you lie. Come. Let you and me take the swim I overheard you promise Mr. Harvison. Let go of her. I, Mr. Harvison, I do your bidding. I let go of Rachel. Now get out of here. And now you've overstepped yourself, Mr. Harvison. Get out! More man than you, Mr. Harvison. More! I'll kill you! Up, Mr. Harvison! Let us show Rachel what puny stuff you are! Up! <laughs> kill me, Mr. Harvison! We have killed. Yes. For me. Yes. Love me. They cannot go back to ship now. No. And on the island, no place to hide. No. Come, John Harrison. I know of a place where they will not take thee from me. Come, thee. And the place was of coral. A splinter of coral flung into a sea of the New Hebrides, westerly of Suva. And when the proa Rachel had stolen from a Suva fisherman touched it, the canoe was ripped open. And we left it there on the beach, then threw ourselves beside it, and slept deeply. And when sun was on our faces, rose and walked to the grass of the island, to the cluster of huts where natives held out their hands to us and gave us island fruit, where Rachel danced for them, and where days vanished became another grain of white coral sand, and night was laid gently at our sides by trade winds, and Rachel danced for me. Old men brought her pearls they had scraped from the sea and went away, left us alone. Island of wild scented sleep, of winds. John? John, wake. Hmm? Wake, John, they must flee. Uh, what? The packet comes. On it will be island police. Oh, what are you talking about? The packet that trades with the islands. It is not the time for it to be here. They come for thee. Well, how do you know? Maybe it's another ship, not. The packet, Island King. I saw it. I was on the beach. What were you doing on the beach? When they have gone, I will tell thee. Run from here. A typhoon comes. They cannot stay long. Run from here, John Harvey. Sir. Where will I go? The boy who waits outside the hut, he will take thee to a place in the island, in jungle of island. Go with him. Rachel, I... Not now, run. When I come back, when they've gone, you'll be here. Run. You'll be here. I will wait for thee. Run, John Harvey. Sir. Rachel, where is she? Where is she? Uh, typhoon come. Pack it, go. Quick, very quick. I know, I saw it sail. Where's Rachel? Typhoon come. Rachel, go. Quick, very quick. Why? <laughs> yes, I not lie. Rachel, pack it. Quick, they go with typhoon. Quick, very quick. Yes, John Harrison. Rachel! 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 
Autolite is bringing you Mr. Jeff Chandler in My True Love's Hair. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, uh, Mr. McSorley, as a crossword puzzle expert, can you define this a precise, peerless, and perfectly performing paragon of parts. Why, sure, Harlow. That would be the Autolite electrical system. Right, and it includes the Autolite starting motor, generator, distributor, coil, spark plugs, voltage regulator, and battery. All originally installed in the many leading makes of Autolite equipped cars, eh, Harlow? Yes, sir. With every unit and component part designed and precision built by Autolite to fit and work together like the parts of a fine watch. So, friends... Don't take chances with that vital electrical system. Be sure to specify Autolite original service parts for your Autolite-equipped car. They're your best assurance of smooth, economical, and safe performance. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Jeff Chandler in Elliot Lewis's production of My True Love's Hair. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I love my love and well she knows. I love the grass whereon she goes. How long has it been, Mr. Harbison? Three months, I think. The police look for you, but you must know that. The thing you've done. Mrs. Jenner. They found a man that next morning. A sailor. He had lain in the sea and been scrubbed against the coral. They thought at first he'd gotten drunk. But they knew her gone. And the girl, Rachel. And they knew what had happened. And then the storm came... And they weren't able to... Where is she? Sometimes they come here, the police. And they ask if you have wandered past here again. Where is she? Aren't you afraid? Where is your husband? I'll ask him, Rachel. Mr. Genowitz is inside, in the house. And you'll see him. But listen to me first. I need to know. Aren't you afraid? Surely they will kill you if they find you. Aren't you afraid? No. The love of the girl. Yes. And the thought of dying. Nothing. A hunger. Yes. A need. Yes. And there is nothing you would not do. To see her again, nothing. I killed for her and would again. Who is more evil? You or him? What are you talking about? Come, in the house. There. Can you get up, Mr. Genowitz? Whiskey. Whiskey. I'll get it. Drink, Mr. Genowitz. What happened to him? He was destroyed. He did not have the youth to search the islands for Rachel. So he sat here and became destroyed. And you, you've helped him to become... Every way I can. I want him to die. To have sinned in his heart as he has, or however he has sinned. He needs to die to be clean again. As you need to die. As you will die. Drink, Mr. Genoese? No, we 
would she say the name of Rachel to me again, nor even talk to me again, and leave Suva again because she was not there. And a word that drifted down about a fight that had been with loading hooks and a man had been killed because of a black-haired girl named Rachel. An island in the Santa Cruz's. But she was not there. Just the grave of a man, a month-old grave on the high strand and a native boy. Oh, one big fella fight, my word. Tell me about it. My word. Over a girl. Two men, they stand here, I think so. And fight, my word, with hooks. One catch other. The girl's name was Rachel. The girl, my word. Black hair and long. She wore a flower. My she... word. Mister. What? What for? You won with girl, huh? <laughs> Where did she go? <laughs> long gone. Where? In boat. To Maleta, I think maybe she say. I think so, maybe. To Maleta. <laughs> You remember the one I mean. Her name was... Rachel. You said so. And you said she was a beauty. Yes. Well, it don't last. Not in the islands. Oh, please. Well, I remember her all right. On account of her name, that's all. On account of nothing else. Listen, you forget her. Just tell me. It's a good time to forget her. Right this minute, now. She's dead. No, I didn't say that. When a ship comes in, some of the sailors get to come ashore and some don't. I send out to them papaya, rice wine, shell combs. I send island girls or whoever's about, and I send them out with baskets. They get to keep a commission. Did she tell you why she's running away? Is she? Yes, she's running away from me, didn't I tell you? No. She didn't either. Please. You're crazy. I don't know where she went. North, I guess. There was a ship going that way, and when it went, she wasn't here. That's all I can tell you. I, 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 I can do it. Finger of my, my right hand and, and finger of my left. Hold them out in, in front of me. Make them meet. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm going to do with you. Oh, uh, what? I'm going to take you home and meet my mother. That's what. Oh, such a charmer you are, John. Uh, you want to? Want to what? To meet my mother. Buy a bottle of gin to make an impression. Uh, who are you? Oh, dearie, John, dearie. Uh, who, who are you? Mary. I'm still Mary, dearie. Get away from me. Oh, get away from oh, me. Oh, now, dearie. I said get away. <laughs> Then they'll pay any attention to her, Mr. Harvest. Huh? Well, then All right, up. that's enough out of you. I said that's enough. It's like I said, Mr. Harvest. Ah, I don't know you. Well, that's a shame, laddie, because I know all about you. I followed you all over the southern seas, I have. Hebrides and the Santa Cruzes and... Policeman, laddie, for a killing you did. prison at Suva was this. Two cells in a hollowed out hill. Two cells for the scum of the islands. For the island scum from the coral reef to the marshals, thieves and drunkards, derelicts and those who have murdered. Men in one, women in the other. Iron bars between them. What had been scraped from the end of the world and dumped like garbage. My name's Ernie B, Miss Mate. I know it's a girl down in New Mia. Killed a man to get her, and then she wouldn't come to me. Fat she was, but I like some fat. What did you do? I killed a man. Oh, that's an easy thing to do, ain't it, mate? I thought at first it would take some doing, but easy, ain't it? I hardly remember. <laughs> oh, you're a joshing one, mate. What you done and what I done, the largest thing a man can do. You think so? John Hardison? See him against the bars there. John Hardison? Uh, lady calling you, mate. Oh! <laughs> Hello, John Harrison. Rachel. The look of me. Old. Why did you run from me, Rachel? I do not know. 
I looked for you all over. I know. I heard. Once in Vanikoro, you passed me in the street. I saw you. Why didn't you stop me? I could not. Why? I could not. You didn't love me? I loved thee. Which is why I fled from thee. I killed for you. I loved thee most then. And others have killed for you. Once they did. No more. Look at me. Beautiful. No. Purest eyes. No. Hands. Give me your hands, Rachel. Oh, the daintiest hands. Old. The hair. Touch it. Do you like it, John? Black. Rachel? Yes? Come closer. Yes. John. Your hair, Rachel. The death of me. And the death of you. They love me. Do not. Blimey. He's strangling her with her hair. Ah, oh, shut up. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Jeff Chandler. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, the world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. In 28 plants from coast to coast, Autolite makes over 400 products for cars, trucks, tractors, planes, boats, and industry. These products include batteries such as the famous Autolite Stay Full, ignition engineered Autolite spark plugs, both standard and resistor types, voltage regulators, wire and battery cable, Autolite bullseye sealed beam units, and Autolite original service parts for all Autolite electrical systems. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. So, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. <laughs> Next week, the true story of the plan to assassinate Thomas Dewey. The report is called Dutch Schultz. Our star, Mr. Broderick Crawford. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morwick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. My True Love's Hair was written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. In tonight's story, Lillian Baia was heard as Rachel. Featured in the cast were Barry Harford, Paula Winslow, Martha Wentworth, Joseph Kearns, Clayton Post, Jack Crucian, and Ben Wright. Our singer was Ernest Newton. Jeff Chandler may currently be seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production East of Sumatra, co-starring Marilyn Maxwell and Anthony Quinn. And remember, next week, Mr. Broderick Crawford in Dutch Schultz. Buy Autolite original service parts, Autolite stay full batteries, and Autolite standard or resistor type spark plugs at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This week in Chicago, National Safety Council members began their 41st Safety Congress, dedicated to the study of accident prevention. As a member of the council, Autolite wishes it continued success. This is the CBS Radio Network.